the Amazon. It is a place of mythic proportions, but its proportions are no myth. It is second in length only to the Nile, but in volume of water, wildlife, and plant life, it is second to none. And the people? They have learned to coexist with the most powerful river on earth. Our visit to the Amazon was truly a trip back in time, to places still beyond reach of the electric and telephone line. Our time machine, a remarkable vessel built on the banks of the river, La Amatista. Aboard, scientists, environmentalists, and volunteers from the Florida Aquarium and the Atlanta Zoo. What's running off into this is nice natural water. What runs off the Hillsborough River is something from basically fertilizers. <laughs> The group was led by aquarium director Jeff Swanigan. While Amatista was mighty comfortable, he allowed us little time aboard. With the ship's twin chase boats, we explored some of the river's multitude of tributaries and occasional villages. After all, we'd come on a fact-finding mission, and fact was, we had much to learn from the river and its people, both by day and night. Uh, there was a larger kingfisher that we have around here, the, uh, it's called the ring, the ring kingfisher. Guide Juan Fajata amazed us when he snatched a caiman, first cousin to Florida's alligator, from the river by hand. Jeff then gave us a caiman lesson. Yeah, he'll wiggle. See the ridge across his eyes right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the thing, you, don't, you wouldn't find that ridge right there, but also, he has three eyelids. He'll have an upper eyelid and a lower eyelid, like, like we all would, and he has a third one that goes across the eye. Let's see if you'll show it. Now, do you see how quickly that opened? Lesson over, Mr. Kamen went home. Our week on the river brought us wonderfully close to its wildlife, more abundant than anywhere I've ever been and gave us a much better understanding of its people, as self-sufficient as any I've ever seen. By our standards, certainly, the standard of living is low. But as Jeff suggested, we could learn much from the way they live. We've just traveled for miles and miles and never see a single piece of trash. And we see how they handle the floods here. They don't try to handle them. I mean, they let the floods manage them, and we try to manage the floods. <laughs> and we're usually not very successful at it. And so here they've adapted to, to the more natural water systems where we, we haven't. The people of the Amazon have adapted to the rise and fall and flooding of the river in a variety of ways. They build stilt houses, which simply become islands unto themselves when the river overflows its banks. Sometimes more than a dozen people will live in a home such as this, along with all their pets and livestock, and a stockpile of food to last for months. The homes of others float on large balsa wood rafts held in place by tall wooden pods or pilings upon which they ride up and down. And others still build their villages on high ground well inland from the river's banks. But while the river remains comparatively unscathed, the same cannot be said of its watershed the rainforest. The trees, including the mighty Seba, once the object of worship, are being torn from the canopy to become a commodity. Giant old growth trees sawn into enormous segments lie stacked as irrefutable evidence of the forest's fate. And as the forest goes, so goes the culture that grew up within it. Na -na 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 -na. The shaman are old, and few young people seem interested in learning the medicinal secrets of the plants. And there are millions of different species, most of which are unknown even to the shaman, much less modern medicine. The people of the river clear only small plots of land for their own agricultural needs. Destruction such as this is not the work of individuals, but industries. Perhaps the rainforest's best hope is in an industry that celebrates rather than decimates the environment. You know, besides 
bring in your money, your dollars also bring culture. One of our guides, Rainy Kokinche, explained to us how tourism is helping to save the trees. But most of the words I speak, I learn from tourists. And many things, also we, we learn about conservation. You know, and uh, in, uh, in our schools, conservation is just starting. You know, nobody tells you that it's bad to, to cut all the trees. It's, nobody tells you you should stop killing the animals. We don't, we don't learn this in school. I learned all about these things since I started working tourism. Oh, yes. Rivers have much in common, and among the members of our expedition, Laura DeLise of the Hillsborough River Greenways Task Force. As our adventure drew to a close, she felt a sense of reassurance about the future of this river and those at home. I think the vision that it can still be done, that you can still protect a watershed and that there are ways of doing it. And I think they might have a heads up on us in terms of the knowledge that they have.